and welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. And in today's video, we are going to be ranking my Odin's Eye palette collection. Now, before we dive into it, I do have Sophia down here on my lap. I got a little behind on recording videos. I only got a couple days left that I can pre-record these videos because we're gonna be doing a move. My kids got sick. So I'm trying to jam a few more videos in each day when I'm able to record. So the kids, uh, other kids are still sleeping, Sophia's awake. I wanted to go ahead and record this video. So I'm sorry if there's extra baby noises or extra cuts in this video as she is nursing to hopefully to sleep on me while I chat with you guys about my Odin's Eye palette collection. I think I have about eight or 10 palettes and I've went ahead and ranked them from my least favorite all the way up to my most favorite. I've been doing this on my channel. Specifically this month, I've been trying to get through a lot of them. I've done Nomad, I've done Gimme Glow, and I've done Juvia's Place and Menagerie. I think those are the ones I've done so far, so I wanted to go ahead and do Odin's Eye today. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. All right, first up, there always has to be a palette at the very bottom, and that, I mean, I should preface this by saying quality-wise, I don't think there's any Odin's Eye palette that I've tried that's kind of like, not my favorite. They've all, for the most part, been very, very nice. But this first one I had to put down low in my ranking, and I think this is going to be a surprise to some of you guys, but it is the Erd palette from obviously Odin's Eye, but the Erd palette. And this was actually my very first palette that I purchased from them and that I featured on my channel. And then I think it was shortly after that they actually reached out to add me to their PR list. So everything since that point has been set in PR. But anyway, this is one that I purchased and I purchased because it's a really pretty green palette. And while I do like that there's green, something that I found with this is because this deepest tone uh, right here is that kind of burgundy shade. A lot of times when I was using the palette together, the looks didn't turn out overwhelmingly green unless I used that darkest green up there because of that burgundy shade and then the shimmers for the most part were just silver or whitish and so overall I felt like I was just it was unexpected the type of looks that I got from it not being overwhelmingly green so that was a little bit of a like a oh I wasn't expecting that and then on top of that the two shimmers in the middle I'm not the biggest fan of because they're pretty darn flaky I like the darker shade it's nice and smooth but the two other shimmers are just not my favorite they're kind of flaky messy chunky on the eyes that type of thing so while I do like some aspects and as a whole like I think the color shade is very pretty. When I actually use it to create looks, the looks that I get aren't my favorite. So that's why I figured fitting spot at the bottom. Sorry to have to, I mean, I have to put someone at the bottom. So they've come out with so many great palettes, especially in the last year or so. So this one is going at the very bottom of my ranking. Next up is going to have to be the Red Dragon palette. And this was a collab with Judy. I think it's, her name is just Judy on YouTube and Instagram. But this is a really pretty palette. But overall, like the type of looks that I got in the kind of just the theme of the palette is very more neutral than any any of Odin's Eye's other palettes that I own, so that's why it's getting kind of low. Do you just need a burp? Yeah, that's what you needed was a good burp. So anyway, she's gonna burp and sit up for a minute before I try to nurse her on the other side. But anyway, the Red Dragon palette, it's really pretty, especially if you want some really pretty red tones. I love the kind of throwing the green in there, the, the aspects of green and whatnot. I got a really pretty grungy green look kind of focusing up here. And then the multicrum in here is super, super pretty as well. I really did like it. So as a whole, I enjoyed the looks that I got out of it, not saying the it's like a super boring neutral palette. It's actually not too neutral, especially if you stick to the greens and the reds and whatnot. I thought it was was very pretty and the looks that I got were had that soft kind of neutral effect to it but still had some fun color with the red more reddish tones or the more grungy tones and whatnot so as a whole it's a really great palette not to put it at the bottom to say it's terrible but comparing and you know having to sit there and decide which palette I like most Odin's Eye comes out with a lot of really unique and fun type of color stories that this one well I love the packaging I think she did a great job and the uh, formulas inside I feel like I liked most of the shimmers in here and the mattes of course are amazing it, as a whole it just didn't rank as high as other ones in my collection. So that's why I'm placing it kind of towards the bottom. She's just gonna be chilling up here. I hope you guys don't mind. I know it's kind of boring to see the back of her head, but she loves to sit up on my shoulder. It's just easiest for her and she can practice her whole holding her head and whatnot without being awkward or, you know, straining and trying to face the camera. So sorry you guys get to see the back of the camera, but she enjoys this way the best. Anyway, next up for the ranking is going to be the Cat's Breath palette. This is the I'm not gonna pronounce it, but it was from that collection that I can never pronounce, obviously. But this palette took me by surprise with how much I really liked it. Kind of like what I have going on my eyes today with the kind of orangey green. This, the combination of orange and green in here is beautiful. I absolutely loved it and it stands out in my memory so much because it is, okay, snack time. But it stands out in my memory as that the orange and green, it's not just an orange and green because I feel like orange and green go to well, go together so well, but these tones of orange oh. and green are I think a little bit more unusual. At least my pairing of them is a little more unique for me and having them in a palette kind of forced me to use them together and I absolutely loved it. And ever since then, I'm always you know keeping my eye out for these type of oranges and greens to pair them together kind of like the look that I did today. And I think it's 
so very fun and it just pops in a fun way. The mattes in this palette are fantastic. Two or three of the shimmers in here are more of that iridescent, kind of very soft, almost barely there, kind of sparkle and color to it, which isn't my favorite. And then the other one is, I think it's got more color to it, but it's also got more chunkiness to it. So the shimmers in here definitely aren't my favorite, but the mattes in here are beautiful and the color story definitely kind of, you know, kind of makes up where it's lacking a little bit. And like I said, I just really enjoyed the looks that I got out of it compared to the other palettes that we've talked about so far. So that's why I'm ranking it above those, even though, like I said, I'm not a fan of the shimmers in it. But Odin's Eye as a brand does phenomenal packaging. So, so pretty. Next is going to have to be the Salomane 2 palette. Now, I got this palette super duper late. However, I've used it twice so far, so I have a little bit of an opinion on it. I haven't used it a ton, but I don't know. I've also, have I featured it on? I might have featured it on my channel. I don't know if that video is live or not yet, but it's coming if it's not live. So anyway, the Salomane 2 palette is really, really pretty. I really like how it's set up. It's got a fun color story with the mix of purples and blues with that little pop of orange and yellow. It's a really pretty color story that I'm definitely attracted to. The shimmers in here are a little bit more like that soft type of colors, but there's a couple that kind of stand out as a general, like in general as a whole with this palette. I'm not over the moon about the shimmers, but they're not like all of them aren't super flaky. So I like that about it because you guys know I don't like really flaky, chunky shadows. And there's maybe only one or two in here that have that chunkiness aspect to them. The others are for the most part nice and smooth, easy to pick up on a brush. They're just a little bit more not understated, but they're a little bit more finely milled, so a little bit softer on the eyes, that type of thing. But the shim but the mattes, I should say, the mattes in here are absolutely beautiful. They're really nice and smooth. I enjoyed the two looks that I've done so far with it. And also, like I said, the color story is really what kind of puts this palette so high to me is because it, it's that color story that makes me excited to open the palette, makes me excited to see what type of looks I can get from it. And also is the type of palette that has so many different colors that work so well together with the different tones that I know I'm gonna get a lot of very fun, different, and you know, unique type of looks that were fun to put together and maybe a bit challenging to put together because I could sit there and try and figure out the different type of colors I could combine on the eyes. So as a whole, I've really been enjoying this palette and you guys will see an official review for this palette hopefully soon. Like I said, you'll see definitely first impressions on my channel. If it's not already up, it's coming soon. But of the two looks that I've done with it so far, I've had a lot of fun with it. So definitely wanted to rank a little bit high, mainly for the color story. As I said, it's just so fun. She's starting to drop off asleep on my lap. She likes to be on her tummy and I just pat her. So you hear little little noises that's her down here moving on let's go to the next palette this is going to be the christmas eve palette now these are the newest palettes that were launched from uh odin's eye and these are limited edition i don't think they're coming back they might already be out of stock i forget but they were for the holiday season and i thought this was a very fun cool tone type of color story definitely a unique color story when it comes to cool tone and christmas i really did enjoy playing with this palette i think to date at the time of me filming this i've done four looks or five looks with this palette and each time i feel like the type of looks that i got were fun, different. They had that cool tone grunge to it that I thought was very, very fun. Like I said, I love the multi-crumb in here. This one right here, very, very pretty. I'm not the biggest fan of this yellow, mainly because it's not a matte, but it's not a shimmer. It's a satin. And it just performs a little bit differently. I mean, it was fine. I used it, but it's just not my favorite. <laughs> she is sucking her fingers. Um, it's just not my favorite. And as a whole, this palette, the main reason I put this obviously bef below the other palette that came out at the same time um, is because there's more chunky shadows in here. So I, I like the uniqueness of this color story in my collection because I definitely feel like I don't have many of these type of cool tone colors or colors and palettes in my collection. I wasn't a fan of how many really flaky, really flaky shimmers that are in this palette. Uh, let me see. I have one, two three, four, off the top of my head, remembering using them, there's definitely four that were pretty chunky, probably five, because that one also looks a bit chunky. Five shadows that, I mean, it's not the worst with them being chunky, they're just kind of messy to apply, um, they're, you know, they fall all over your face, and even if I use glitter primer and then top it with a glitter primer on top to try to seal it in, I still get a really messy face. Like, I, I have sparkle on my forehead one day from wearing them on my eyes. Yes, sparkle on my cheeks, but also on my forehead, and I just, I don't like it when it's that messy, so. That's why even though I like the uniqueness of this grungy type, type of take on Christmas and I love the multi-chrome in here, it was just easier for me to place it below the Christmas, obviously, Merry Christmas palettes, but still a great palette, still a fun color story and one that I had a lot of fun each time I went into it. So much fun kind of figuring out what type of color story I could get and I love the cool tone grunge. That was something very fun, unique, and different with this palette. Next up, as I said, the Merry Christmas palette. This one can launch at the same time. Definitely a little bit draws me in, but more because of those greens, especially that 
that neon green. Now I will say that neon light green right there is not the strongest shade. It's very, very light, almost a dusty feel to it, but I'm planning to try it in an all matte look and pack that over the lid with a white base underneath, like a white concealer. And I feel like then it's gonna really shine, but kind of using it to blend out shadows, I don't feel like it's particularly that strong, but still, as a whole, this color story with those pops of green definitely draws me in. I really, really love the uh, multi-chrome in this palette, which is right here. Such a pretty multi-chrome, oh my goodness. And then on top of those greens, there's that shimmery orange, which is a nice smooth orange. I love this type of orange, it's not too chunky. They also have the hot pink that's a nice smooth hot pink. So as a whole, that's why I put this one above the uh, Christmas Eve, just because I like the formulas for the shimmers in here more, and the multi-chrome is super pretty, and there's just more greens in here than not. And it's the green and red is a fun combination, and I feel like it's always a challenge slash just fun and unique and different whenever I combine them in a look. So that's why I'm putting this above the other one. But as it, as it stands, it's a great palette. The mattes are really, really pretty. Very, very nice formula. This orange shimmer has to be my favorite. Just simple shimmer in the palette, and the multi-chrome has to be one of my favorites. Definitely between the two palettes, my favorite from the two palettes that they launched. And as a whole, there's just fewer chunky shadows. I think there's only two really chunky formulas when it comes to the shimmers in here. So yeah, overall, it's just a great palette that I had a very fun time with. It's limited edition, so I, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but definitely just a really fun type of color story that's very fitting for the season because they wanted to bring it out for Merry Christmas. and definitely gives you that Merry Christmas vibe, but then those pops of other colors to just give it a bit of a different twist and makes it so you can have, a, you know, create a lot of fun different looks that still kind of keep in theme with the holidays, but aren't just like a, a, a simple, you know, red and green type of eyeshadow look. I don't know. I thought it was a really pretty color story. Very, very fun. And overall, I just really enjoyed the, the looks that I was able to create with this palette and the different colors that they included. I don't know, something about that orange with all the green and red. I love that pop of orange. So definitely had to put this one a little bit higher than the Christmas Eve, but they're both still really great palettes. All right, next up is going to be Odin's Eye. This is a collab palette with Angelica Nikvis, the Hila palette. I think I've heard some people pronounce it Hela. Hila? When I first saw it, I said Hila, but I think it's Hela. Whichever it is, this palette right here, I definitely had to put high in my countdown. I think a top three because it's so pretty. It's got a fantastic, fun combination of green and kind of pink and burgundy. The multi-chrome in this palette is absolutely beautiful. There are more smooth shimmers and really nice, just really nice shimmers in here than the really chunky shadows. I think the chunky shadows are just two of them, honestly. And all the other ones are either just beautiful, smooth, easy to work with, or a multi-chrome, which is also smooth and easy to work with. Odin's Eyes multi-chromes are so nice and smooth and beautiful and easy to work with, apply on the eyes, and to also stay on the eyes, they stay really well. So overall, just a great palette, and it's got so much green in it. It's got grungy green, it's got yellow green, you guys know, I'm a happy camper with this. The only downside to this palette, literally the only downside to this palette for me personally, was I wasn't a fan of the outer cover and that's just because I got little kids so I just am not the biggest fan of it. I get the meaning of it. I get what she was going for. Not dogging on Angelica at all. It was her palette and she, I think the artwork and the, con you know, the concept for the palette is Aww. just brilliant and it's very beautifully done but for me with little kids, I definitely keep it tucked away so they don't come across it because one of my kids just does not like skeletons at all. So anyway, that aside, that's literally the only con when it comes to this palette. Overall, it is fantastic, and I just had to give it a very high ranking when it comes to all of my Odin's Eye palettes. All right, next up, another uh, collab palette. This is a collab with the Fancy Face. This is the Hummingbird palette. First off, I could stare at this packaging all day. It is beautiful. It is stunning. I love it so much. I will say though, a con for all three of these palettes, only these three in the uh, Legendary Diversa collection, is that they have that I don't know, it's like sandpaper. So when you put the books together, it's like rubbing sandpaper like pads together. I don't like that sound. It's like nails on a chalkboard to me. So that's that's one downside, only downside. I'm very glad with Gila, they went back to like smooth packaging. I will say that. But the whole sandpaper aspect of this palette, I just, I don't like it. I keep them separated because of that. But anyway, moving past that, let's look at this color story. This color story was just so fun. It was like a rainbow palette, but a different take on a rainbow palette because the rainbow was mixed with mattes and shimmers. So like, you know, you had the matte red, but then you had a shimmer green and so the type of looks that you could get were very fun different unique and I just had a fantastic time with it again the multi-chrome in here was so beautiful so smooth the shimmers as a whole were really pretty too I think there was only these two in the middle row these two shimmers not middle row but these two shimmers in this row that were kind of chunky that wasn't my favorite but the other shimmers were beautiful the green shimmer in here was absolutely stunning to work with very smooth to apply and I just created a lot of really unique looks and the mattes of course the mattes were intensely pigmented so very pretty and as a whole just very memorable and very just stands out in my head as being so very beautiful. One of my favorites for sure. Definitely one of my favorite 
Enzy palette that they came out with that year, and it was just so well done. Like I said, for me, definitely with this palette, I love the packaging as much as I love the inside. The palette as a whole, they just they did such a beautiful job on it, and I just I really like this palette. It has, it has a special place in my heart, and all of the eye looks that I created just stand out in my memory as being very unique, different, very intense. Like all of the looks were just bold and out there. Like the colors showed up so well, but they were still very pretty and flattering. And the shimmers were beautiful. The multi-chrome shifts were stunning. So yeah, definitely had to give the Hummingbird a very high spot in my countdown. I'm sure you guys guessed this already, but the number one palette from Odin's Eye in my collection has to be the Giant Wolves palette. And this is a collab with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. Look at this packaging as my daughter <laughs> sucks on my arm. She's just sucking everything right now. If she was not any older, I would think she was teething, but no, she's only two months. She's not teething yet. But anyway, getting back to the palette, this palette pack, look at this packaging. It is so beautiful. They did such a good job. It is so beautiful. Annette on the cover is just stunning. Oh my goodness. But look at this color story inside. This color story took me for a bit of a ride because I remember when I first uh, opened it up and saw it, I was like, Okay, it didn't jump out to me as being that, I don't know, that special, I guess. Not that it wasn't that special, but it didn't jump out to me as being that, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it just didn't jump out to me. I can just say it that way. It didn't jump out to me that much. And then once I started playing with it and combining different shades and seeing the differences between the color choices for the mattes, the color choices for the shimmers, the multi-chrome that she put in here, which is this shade right here, which is just magical, I started to really appreciate this palette and I was like, okay, this is actually really pretty and really brilliantly done and it's just a gorgeous, I named it as one of my top 10 winter palettes from last year just because it's got all those deep dark tones. It's more cool tone leaning but it still has such beautiful depth and overall, Annette just did a fantastic job with this palette. I love how many deep tones that are in here, but they don't kind of all look the same, if that makes sense. Like these three on the side, you would think, you know, could look all just black on the eyes. But when I actually use them and create looks with them, they really do stand out as being, you know, black and then purple and then more of a blue purple, blurple, whatever it's called, and then a kind of green over here. They did stand out on the eyes as being different, and then just pairing it with the different shadows, and then just pairing it with the different shimmers in here really made the eye looks pop. I love the kind of cool tone grunge I could get kind of sticking up here. As a whole, I just really enjoyed the adventure that I had with this palette. And also with this palette, I loved all the shimmers, I think except this shade right here, only because this shade was just kind of like an iridescent toppery type of shadow. So it came, seemed to me kind of unnecessary in the palette, just since I had other shades that I could kind of use to get that same look, if, if that makes any sense. I don't know, it was just kind of underwhelming. But there wasn't any particularly chunky shadow in here, which I did like. This pur dark purple one was a bit chunky, but not bad. Not the kind of chunky flaky where it falls and you get flakes on your forehead like, like I was talking about earlier. This shade, these two over here as well on the top are just beautiful, so stunning. They're beautiful on the eyes, beautiful to work with, and paired with these tones, you just create, I created so many beautiful, unique, stunning, very grungy, very just winter-esque type of looks that it still stands out in my memory as such a fantastic palette that created so many pretty looks. So I had to bring this one in as number one when it comes to Odin's Eye palettes. They did a great job with the Legendary Diversa collection as a whole, but this palette specifically and the Hummingbird palette are my favorite when it comes to packaging. It, they are just stunning. Literally, they sit back here, both of them on the shelf because I think they're so beautiful. I want to display them because they don't they, I don't want them to sit on my bookshelf like this they're just so beautiful I love to be able to see the cover when I walk into my little makeup room here so yeah number one from Odin's eye let me know if you guys heard that little like snore I think it was a snore it was like a snore sigh that that kind of just sound like a pig snorting over here let me know she is asleep on me all right so that is gonna do it for me for this video I hope you guys enjoyed this Odin's eye ranking video sorry if it was like I said it was a little bit chaotic having Sophia kind of up here then out of here and whatnot but hopefully I put it together I was able to edit and put this together in a cohesive manner so you guys can see all of my Odin's Eye eyeshadow palette collection hopefully I did not forget one I will say I totally forgot the Erd palette before sitting down remembered it right after I turned my camera on thankfully but hopefully I didn't forget anything else so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the palettes that I have from Odin's Eye in my collection let me know your thoughts down below let me know what's your number one favorite palette from Odin's Eye or which eyeshadow palettes you have from Odin's Eye in your collection I'd love to hear that down below in the comments but with that said that is going to do it for me thank you so much for watching as always I'm over on Instagram I'm LadyKady92 over there and with all that said I'll see you guys very soon in my next video hopefully tomorrow bye guys